All right, if you're like me, you probably at some point wanted to change out an MC4 connector or recycle an MC4 connector. And today I'm gonna try to share with you how I've been able to get these things apart. These are some of the tools I used. I actually ordered uh, some of these hoping that you could disassemble uh, the connector with uh, a pin removal tool. And I'll show you why you really can't do that later. But for now, uh, let me get started and show you how you can go from this to this. And um, it's not too difficult, but it is a little tedious and I'll try to show you each step. Alrighty, so we're gonna start off with a um, regular MC4 connector. The first step is to take the, uh, the ferrule off the backside and I'll stick a crescent wrench on here. These have a uh, hex, um, nut on them. Sometimes they'll come apart and then sometimes they won't. We'll see. Oh yeah, this one's coming off. So once we have that off, we can just slip that back out of the way. There's two pieces of rubber here. doing this on a boat in Central America in the summer I had to turn my fan off just so the audio would be good so I'm definitely sweating all right so this is kind of like the first toughest part here is to get uh, this piece out of um, the housing the casing and you see this is this is crimped onto the wire here from the factory and you can see these these little um, barbs so that once this is inserted into the housing these things are not made to be removed again and there's no tool that um, really could even uh, remove these because if you were to take like a normal uh, pin removal tool you see it slips on here and it doesn't go past um, the shoulder to be able to retract those pins and what makes and what's even worse is when this is inserted in here if you try to insert the tool the tool doesn't go past um, the hole in here inside of the housing so there's no way for this tool to be able to uh, interact with these pins to be able to retract them. And the same thing happens on the other connector. Even though it's um, closer to the same size, uh, the tool isn't deep enough to go all the way down uh, to, to interact with those pins. And the same thing, this, this um, is inside the, the uh, housing here and you can't even insert the tool to go over this, it won't fit in the, the plastic housing hole. So it's really, it's impossible to use a proper pin removal tool. There is no tool. Uh, I can't even see how you could make a tool to do this. It's kind of more of a, a brute force attack to be able to uh, recycle these things. Now, what I did find though, was using these little uh, pin removal tools to, to go in here from the backside, I did have a little bit of luck with these helping me out, but sometimes you don't, if these aren't necessary, sometimes you can, you can kind of like wiggle the, yeah, so you can twist the, uh, the connector and get it to pull out. So once you've got to this point, you're kind of on the home stretch. Um, you can take these, rest of these off the end of the wire. And I like to recycle these little short pieces of wire um, to use to connect uh, solar charge controllers to the main bus and things of that nature. Um, I should have shown you. All right. So if you have one, I'll do it again. So now it's back in there locked. If you have one of these things that's uh, not wanting to cooperate, I found it by inserting, I could get up to three of these in here. There we go, you just get it pushed in a little bit. I 
There's another one in. And I honestly don't know if these really made that big a difference or not. But I was able to able to spread that there's a metal collar inside this plastic housing I was kind of able to spread that just enough oh, man, to get these things to come out yeah I don't know this one doesn't want to come out I've done I've done like four of these four or five days already There we go. Twisting it, twisting it and pulling at the same time seems to really be the best way to get these things to come out. Um, I really can't say that I recommend using the pin removal tools or even a pick. Just kind of like being a little bit gentle with it and getting it off. So then the next thing you wanna do, if you want to recycle these, um, a lot of times this is really only as far as you need to go because what happens, um, is these things will come become brittle and sometimes they'll break especially on this side these little ears will have a tendency to break off of the um, the connector so instead of having to cut and put a new one on and crimp it um, you could just pull this thing off and slip a new one on and and you're good to go these factory these are factory crimps i, I cut these off of um, solar panels that were no longer um, salvageable. So I salvaged the cables off of them to use on other things. But now you can see here how well that is crimped. Um, and it's, re it's crimped on there really well. And the way that I've found to get the best deal with this is a little common screwdriver and a couple pair of pliers. And I'm using needle nose. You could use bigger pliers, but needle nose work good. You want to grab each side of the barrel. And what you're trying to do is not squeeze it too hard because you don't want to crimp it more. But what you're going to try to do is splay it open like this. I don't know if you can see how I'm doing that. I'm kind of splaying it downwards like this to try to open this gap up here in the middle and haven't quite got it enough yet let's say patience pays take your time there we go Probably got them up there, but I'm gonna try it for a little bit more. All right, so now you can see how I've got that splayed apart a little bit. And you can see how the, the uh, individual strands of the uh, cable are starting to come, come out. You can either, at this point, you can either try to work its way out. If it still won't come out, this is where the screwdriver is definitely gonna come into, into play. I'm trying to, um, Try those edges up. Is, I've already cleaned these up better, but you can see here these little. This starts off life as a, as a round circle like this before it gets crimped. But I'll be able to uh, recycle and reuse this. Trying to get that open again, not crushing very hard with the um, with the pliers because you don't want to crimp it. You're just trying to get that thing separate. There we go. Opened up, splayed open, and what I got. side over here is really curled curled around
So now we got the cable off and we're left with this. Now this one's really ugly. It's um, curled over there in the corner. And so what I was doing here is I put the blade of the screwdriver in there to try to force that, uh, that curl open. And this is where uh, yeah, this was this is the worst one I've had to deal with yet. Lucky, lucky for you guys. Like I said, take your time, be patient. I'm trying to hurry up so that this isn't a hugely long video. I'm doing it in one shot, no cuts or outtakes, so to speak of. Uh, I add a few more, more strands of wire in there. Okay, so that's open and really ugly. Might still do a little bit more there. Okay. So now what I would do is I would take my needle nose pliers and try to reform the barrel uh, as round as I could to accept the cable again. And the crimpers and really you don't need a whole lot better than that I got a little too overzealous here at the very end no big deal but if you were to be wanting to recrimp this You just insert, insert that back on there and then crimp with your uh, your crimping tool again so you can do it with the wire uh, with the wire still attached um, I've done some with the wire cut the wire off it doesn't really seem to make any difference um, as far as working the the uh, connector so there you go um, where's that one at? yeah now you got another recycled MC4 connector ready to go again and without too much difficulty and rather than throw these things in the trash you're, again you're keeping stuff out of landfill you're not having to pay for more MC4 connectors and um, I mean there seemed no reason to throw these things away when you could reuse them so I hope you found this video useful and if you did great and if anybody has ever found a tool which I really couldn't imagine there being a tool, but if anybody knows of a tool uh, just designed to disassemble these MC4 connectors, please leave a comment in the, or please leave a comment below. And as always, you guys have a great day. Also, one other thing worth mentioning, uh, I was taking a few of these more apart, different types. You can see these are both uh, the same uh, MC4 connector, or same side. This would be the uh, male side. I guess it depends on what you're talking about. It's the male side of the pin, female side of the plug. But not only are they a little bit different in length, um, the this is the uh, the pin that came out of this one. This is the pin that came out of this one, and you can see here. Here I got a magnet. So this is obviously um, tin coated copper and here we have ooh, just I don't even know if it's tin coated it's just steel um, also there is a difference in cable conductors um, sorry, oops. 
see here. There we go. Clean copper wire, not ideal to use. Here we have tin coated copper. And while these are supposed, supposed to be 10 gauge uh, copper conductor, man, let me tell you, the non tin coated one feels a lot smaller. A lot smaller. Um, much better quality all the way around. And of course, the uh, the cheaper steel pin was on the simply copper one, and here we have the true tin coated copper uh, connector. And I've already taken this many, a few more apart, but I came across this one. And I thought it was worth uh, sharing and noting with you. You can see how better how this is assembled. Now this is the the mate to this connector and I already had already taken this one apart. And here is the housing and inside the housing is this um, little spike collar on the outside and it goes in to the housing. Oops. I don't have my camera assistant right this second. It goes into the housing so normally these barbs keep this piece from coming back out and the barbs interact I don't know if you can see let's see if I can try to make this a little bit closer there's three little barbs on the inside of this that interact with this the barbs on um, the connector here so this goes in here as such, drops down in there, and then it gets caged in the housing by this, and it has a little collar. And my suspicion is, is this particular, well, these two are, this should have been like sonically welded, or I don't think it would have been glued. I think it would have been sonically welded in there, which is why this piece doesn't come back out. Otherwise, when I took the nut off the backside of here, whoop, the whole thing comes out quite easily. There's nothing to keep it uh, caged in the housing. See how that, those two pieces are there. So, and also this one I found, they went the extra step and soldered this one together, which I've actually done that myself. I sometimes I'll solder these these connectors but this one's soldered it's going to take a little bit more work to get that apart and maybe i won't even bother taking it apart and interestingly um these were not magnetic they are tin coated copper as well as the uh, uh you can't really see it too good there but the the conductors are tin coated copper as well so you'll probably run into different types of uh mc4 connectors and they're certainly not all created equal and i've bought bags of these in the past you know probably 50 in a bag or 100 in a bag and I, you know to be honest with you it never really even occurred to me when i bought them to check to see if the um if the uh, metal was uh, um copper or if it was steel or not because yeah, they're definitely not all created equal. And you don't want the, uh, the steel ones. Okay, well, 